Hello, welcome back to the Met Games Podcast. I'm your host, Connor Fallon. Leave them here, Dad. Hello and welcome back to the Net Gains Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Roger Parent. I'm an ex-CEO, former pro athlete, and father of three. I'm your other host, Frank Field. I compete on the AVP Beach Volleyball Tour while also working for one of Roger's companies. We are a mental toughness podcast. We are trying to teach you in simple, digestible ways on how to train your minds. We are kind of sick and tired of everyone just saying, push harder, push harder, push harder. Um, We try to dive deep into a topic every week so that we can give you real action to take. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, comment, email us, reach out. Uh, We're trying to help people with this podcast, so interact with us and we'll be happy to help you out uh, because our goal here is to help you do some really cool things. Frank, what are we talking about today? All right, today we are talking about manifesting, which I think is a very misunderstood topic in the realm of mindset, which is what we're here to fix. Uh, But before we jump into mindset and manifesting, you wanted to do a few minutes on this TikTok ban. So this is this is right up your alley. You you are Mr. TikTok and Mr. (laughs) Mr. Digital Marketing. Maybe not Mr. TikTok, but Mr. Digital Marketing, Mr. AI. So uh, go ahead, give us your thoughts. Yeah. So basically, Congress passed this law that would that would force TikTok to either sell to an American owned company of which it's so big that there's only a handful of tech companies, obviously that would acquire it or be banned in the U S I want to just bring it up. It's a key topic right now. Um, have you heard anything about it? I just saw the bill went through one house. Yeah. So that, so now it's, and now it's to the Senate. It seems like it's going to take a couple months before they even deliberate on it, but I think it's outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. I mean, at, at the end of the day, TikTok's like the people on every social platform that are trying to manipulate people. I mean, it's just like literally what they do. They collect data. They specifically show um, posts that rile you up, right? That get you to think a certain way. And even when you think that you're hearing a contrasting opinion, what the, what like these algorithms will do was they'll present you with a really good argument on one side and then like the most outrageous argument on the other side so that it pushes you down a belief path. So we all know these algorithms are manipulating people. I mean, it's so abundantly clear that we all know that, but you're big on this right now. I feel like this yeah, is every, but, every time we talk, you're, you're saying that we have no idea how much these algorithms actually do though. It's so subtle. Like even if, like, look, if, if you like, like TikTok and Facebook and all these companies, like know whether you like blonde or brunettes, Frank, like, you know, Blondes. it's like, yeah, I love you. Based, on, based on like, you slow your scroll rate more when you scroll past blondes than brunettes, you know, it's like, it's, it's wild how, how much, how many data points they have that the average consumer just really has no idea. Like we sort of think basic, like, oh, we're. I engage with this post, so it's going to show me more like this post. It's way more than that. They understand like exactly how you're scrolling, your average pace of scroll, um, exactly how many seconds of that video you watch versus not, and then what context within that video caused you to scroll to the next video. So then they can understand all of those little micro decisions you're making so fast, and you're making like a thousand of them, right? Um, they're just collecting all this data to, to better keep you on the platform. And what it comes down to is that TikTok's just not controlled by the U S government media or, you know, basically a big tech within the U S. So to me, I'm passionate about this thing because TikTok feels to me and I use all the platforms. This is what I do for a living. Um, TikTok feels to me like the, it's very different than the other platforms. Like it's, you actually can get a variety of a variety of source news, a, a variety of opinions versus it feels like cra- a crazy echo chamber on all of the other platforms. Like it's just the same stuff. 
So, so you feel that TikTok is a superior platform? You think it's just U.S. government or U.S. businesses trying to keep control with the current social media platforms that are in the U.S.? Yeah, look at TikTok is eating everybody's lunch. Half the U.S. now has like uses TikTok daily, and it's been just taking over. It TikTok is driving the tactics on the other channels. That's why Instagram has Reels and YouTube has Shorts now. When you see <coughs> other people copying the platform, the platform that they're copying is the market leader. TikTok's the market leader right now. Just is what it is. So yeah, it's a market leader for a reason. <clears throat> Do you not worry that TikTok is owned by China? So I think it's simple. Just pass laws that apply to all the tech platforms. Like if, if, if uh, one platform can't share data with outside governments, then no platform should be allowed to share data with outside governments. Pass a law that says that, right? Like you can, you can do things that aren't just banning or hostily taking over the app so that you can manipulate it to your gain. But I, I just don't think that's what they want. They don't want to fix TikTok. <laughs> they just want to control it. You know, I think that's what they're going after. And it's just, it's wild. You hear all these politicians talking about it. And it's just like, there are reasonable solutions, laws we can write to ensure that TikTok's data is hosted in the U.S., that we have laws that prevent that data, those servers from being accessed or that data from being shared. Um, there's a lot of things that we can pass to solve the issue, but they don't want to solve the issue. And, and in fact, nobody even is talking about the issue. They're just only talking about how an adversarial government wants to manipulate us. Well, our own government wants to manipulate us, <laughs> you know, like yeah. everybody does. A lot of it feels like governmental saber rattling, right? Like just it's China owned. China would never, whoever owns TikTok, I don't think it's the government, right? It's privately owned, but they would never sell it to the US. Like that's just, I don't see any way that would happen, right? So a lot of this just seems like, kind of governmental U.S. versus China rhetoric. Yeah, we'll see. It is super interesting. I still don't think it's going to happen based on like TikTok just has so much public sway at this point. Like it's gone too far. Um, there was a representative, Jeff Jackson of North Carolina. It's like everybody's favorite politician because he sits down and talks like a human authentically to everybody. And he just posted like that he supported the bill and he just got absolutely canceled, <laughs> like, like just blasted on TikTok and every platform, really. I mean, he just can't even post any like he just got completely crushed in popularity. And it's just. I just don't I think it's so unpopular because people are just smart enough to realize that there's other solutions to this problem that just they refuse to even acknowledge exist. So, okay, so give us 60 more seconds. What do you think is the outcome going to be? This might not be for a few more months, but what do you think is going to happen um and any other thoughts on it? I think the most there's two scenarios, either one the Senate crams it through. Biden has already said he would sign it. So either the Senate crams it through and then Biden signs it, and then it, I don't think it'll sell. TikTok's market share is only 10% in the US, so they may even rather take a hit than sell it, or they might try to find another way to sell it so that they can still sort of control it within a US subsidiary or something. But um, I think the more likely scenario is it just doesn't pass. I, think the, I don't think the Senate will get enough to pass it um, because there's such an outpouring of support against it. but. I don't know. It's it's sort of like a test to see if people have any power anymore, mm -hmm. like it, or if politicians are that bad that in the U.S. at this point in our late stage capitalism that they just will go straight against what anybody cares about. Mm. I guess we'll see. I Roger Parent yeah. preview. We'll see. All right, let's All jump right. into our topic though. Let's manifest TikTok staying. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's manifest okay so uh we have a few topics today we're going to talk about what is manifesting we'll talk about some stigmas around manifesting and then finish out with pro strats how to manifest things um 
So first of all, what what is manifesting? And you have a definition for us, so go ahead. This might just be Roger Parent talking for 30 minutes straight on this podcast. <laughs> no. no. So I think we, we sort of defining manifesting as thinking aspirational thoughts with the purpose of making them become real, right? And, and manifesting can be broader specific. Uh, you could say like something very broad is like, I want to be a millionaire. Um, whereas when we talk about goals and our goal setting podcast, we should always be looking for goals to be specific. So instead of saying, I want to be a millionaire, it would be something like, I want my net worth to be over a million dollars, or I want a million dollars available to me in liquid cash, or I want to be making a million a year. What do you mean when you say, I want to be a millionaire? Mm -hmm. Um, that's where like goal setting should be much more specific. Whereas manifesting is where we can start broad and just try to manifest something more broad into play, or it can also be specific. Yeah, I, I think that manifesting is one of the most underutilized tools in this mindset tool belt that we're trying to give you guys. And I think it's also one of the most misunderstood. Um, another, another great example is there can be negative manifestations, right? You can, you can manifest something like, I'll never find true love or I'll never find the one for me. And by Ooh. telling yourself this narrative over and over again, it creates that end manifestation that you are, that you are thinking, right? Um, and then anytime you, you meet someone who's not into you, it just confirms this bias and then it further leads you down the path, this negative manifestation that you're already thinking. So a, a lot of the questions that we have to answer is when we, when we do identify like what a manifestation we want to have, what do we want to create in our lives? Are we in alignment with what that thing is? Um, a, a good example, if we just stick with the, um, true love manifestation, like I, I want to find true love. Are you in alignment with that end result? Are you taking care of your mental health? Are you taking care of your, your physical health? Are you ready to be in a long-term relationship? So these are kind of things you have to ask yourself and figure out if you're in alignment with to create that end result. Yeah, I think a lot of this, what makes manifestation so difficult, or I think people sort of think it's like fairy dust sometimes, like, oh yeah, sure, yeah. I can just <laughs> yes. think something and it becomes something, right? Um, there is something to be said about like true energy and what, what, you know, you and I were talking before this, before we started recording, which was, we were talking about how it's actually been scientifically proven at this point that there is actual like energy fields around us. And when you're around other people, you can feel that energy. And the hardest part about manifesting is like consistently, typically manifesting something doesn't just happen. You don't just think about it and it happens that day. It, it's inherently longer term, like I'm manifesting this over a period of time. Um, and so you need to learn how to have this underlying belief that you're, you, that you can continue to move toward your desired outcome. So the, the analogy I came up with was, was clay is like, in order to mold the clay, you just have to believe that the clay is in your hands, right? Like you have the clay. And so before we can even mold it or take action and go towards all those goals and make it actually come to fruition, you need to consistently have the belief that you are holding the clay that you can mold. Yeah. It's actually it's so funny you say that because I, when you started talking about like energy shifts and believing in energy, I, I, I know you're pretty well at this point, but I still, you gave me this like old man, get off my lawn energy. <laughs> And I feel like your, your TikTok rant was kind of along those lines too. And then I was like, you probably don't even, don't even believe in, you know, energy shifts, right? You're like, oh no, like I'm a total believer in that, uh, which I, you know, I thought that was kind of funny, but it's, it's really true. You know, if you, if you put your energy towards something, it just kind of magically happens. Right. And I guess we want to stick yeah. away from this magic term, but, um, you know, that's what manifestation is, is putting your energy towards something and then it becomes real. I can't move past this 50 year old. <laughs> analogy <laughs> but you're definitely right i'm definitely that guy oh yeah uh, that's okay at least i'm self-aware uh, <laughs> but yes i uh I, I also have 50 year old knees because of volleyball so thanks yeah. for that yeah you're just a 50 year old in a lot of ways in a lot of ways <laughs> yeah I, I think i have like 60 year old eyes that's rough 
<laughs> You've had that I for your whole life, anything. though, so that's tough. I know, man. Just brutal. Uh, all right. What are some uh, stigmas, though, around manifesting as we're talking about magic fairy dust here? Well, actually, before we go into that, I think it's interesting to talk about the blue car analogy. So, you, you know, you were talking mm. about underlying beliefs, and when you tell yourself something is true, it starts to become real. So you had an analogy for that, and I'd love to have, uh, have you explain that to the listeners. Yeah, so... Uh, Back in the day when I was young, Roger Perry. Oh, back uh, in the day. <laughs> back in the day. 16 years old, I got my blue Dodge Dakota Sport. So blue truck analogy. Um, I loved this truck. Um, but when I got it and I'm driving around, all I could see were blue trucks. Like everywhere, I just noticed every blue truck. And I, I'm. this is sort of a popular analogy. Like whatever you see, you, you can see... You continue to see that because you're actually looking for it or your brain makes that connection every time you see a blue truck like oh there's another one oh there's another one um and so i I think part of crafting that underlying belief is when you go toward trying to manifest something you are trying to consistently spot the signs that it is possible and real so um, we talked about um like being a pro athlete or something like that. It's like you're playing against someone that's better than you, but oh, I just want a point against someone who's better than me. It's possible. Oh, I just want another point. Or I just made a good play against something that I normally wouldn't be able to get to. I can do it, right? So if you're, if you're looking for the positive signs, you'll find them. And just the same way as if you're looking for the negative signs, like you mentioned, you will find them. Like you'll find failure and adversity and all those things if you choose to focus on that. But if you choose to focus on the blue car, you'll find them. They're there on the road all mm-hmm. the time, right? Yeah, I think it's it's such a good analogy. And that's kind of what manifesting is. And that's kind of the misunderstood piece of it, right? Is it's not goal setting. It's it's just not. It's just this broad thing that you want to get to. It's an end result. And you're trying to find signs that continue to move you into that direction and create this internal monologue that moves you in that direction. And you're trying to like craft your underlying belief that it's possible and that you will yes. do it. Because like when, when you and I first started talking about manifesting, I, I said, I just like believe that I'm going to become X and it's like really hard for me to define how I believe that, but I just believe it in my core. And it's, it's really because as soon as I sort of figure out what I want to manifest, I'm, I'm just looking for those signs to, mm-hmm. to craft that belief. And so without that belief, the manifestation really doesn't happen. So that's like the, the most fundamental part of it is finding things to confirm that it's possible so that you can put out that real confident energy toward it. Yeah, I think that's a great definition. Um, but we should talk about what manifesting is not because I think there's so many stigmas around manifesta- manifestation and people just get it wrong, you know, straight up. People just get it wrong. People, I see social media posts all the time like hashtag manifesting or, you know, whatever. And it's it's like, mm-hmm. it's just not even being done correctly, right? Uh, I think, for example, vision boards are the stupidest thing in the world. I I don't get it. I, I see people talk about them like, oh, I'm putting all these things on my vision board and I'm going to make these things a reality. I just don't, it just doesn't align. I don't, I don't think they're stupid. I don't think they work. I think you can just arbitrarily put anything on a vision board and hope it comes true. But if you're not actually aligning yourself with that end result, then it's not going to happen. And a lot of this comes down to manifesting is not wishful thinking. It's not just, I want a Ferrari. I want to be rich. Make it happen world. Make it happen universe. And you don't take any steps. I, I, that's not what manifesting is. Yeah. And I think the, my issue with vision boards isn't necessarily like, I think it's okay to maybe visualize what you're trying to manifest so that you can like have that mental picture that you're always sort of focused on. Mm -hmm. I think the issue with vision boards is that they inherently become scattered with a variety of manifestations. Yep. People tend to put like, well, I want this life. And they put like 17 different things on the vision board. And it's like, I mean, manifesting that life is like, it's the most broad, undefinable, you can't even mentally focus on all those things at once to even Mm -hmm. go down and any one of these paths. So to me, it just sort of splits the focus so much that it becomes just really difficult to actually put into action. 
Yeah, and vision boards are inherently almost corrupted by the common thoughts of what a vision board is. Like, w- mm-hmm. picture any vision board you've seen in pop culture or TV or a movie, and it's a, a board. Someone has a car up there, a sports car. Someone has a bag of money up there. Someone has a you know a beautiful spouse up there or a significant other. Mm-hmm. It's like the same things, you know. But if you don't truly identify what you want in life, then you're just following uh, there you go we'll, we'll talk about tiktok you're just following whatever tiktok or social media is telling you to want so it has to truly it has to truly identify with your core of what you want to achieve and maybe that's not something that revolves around money but it's something that you really want to achieve internally yeah and ag- and again this isn't manifestation is not an instant gratification thing like that's it's just like it's important to hit that point home that these goals are these it's also not goal setting right like so what's interesting is that manifesting goals can be manifested but not all manifestations should be goals Ooh. right because write that down goal setting should be specific right and um manifesting can be broad but should be on like maybe a single or a couple topics as opposed to just like so wide sweeping. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I think it does. Yes. I think that makes sense. Basically <laughs> makes sense yeah. to you and me, <laughs> but we do, <laughs> we do have some, some pro strats too. So, um, we've identified what manifesting is, what manifesting is not in order to manifest something. We have a few bullet points just on what you can do to make it more possible. So, uh, first one and most important is you have to decide what you're trying to manifest. If you don't know what you're trying to achieve as a desired outcome, then you're never going to achieve it. So number one, decide what it is you want. Yep. And then the second one would be spot the signs that it's possible, which is look for the blue car. Look, look for the blue car and you will find it that mm-hmm. it's possible. Focus on your energy as well. So... You, you, you need to be looking for the blue car and finding signs that you're moving towards the right area, but you also have to change your energy. Energy is huge, man. Like, I mean, you just know it. You see this in sports all the time, but at work and wherever, like you could just feel it. Um, sometimes I'm on like, I'm on like a work call and I'm just like looking around the zoom and I'm like, there is not a single soul that thinks this call is valuable that like, why are we all here? And everybody is just not enjoying this call. Like we, we're just wasting labor. Mm-hmm. And then there's some other times where I'm on a call and it's like, you can just see everyone like sitting up in their chairs. Like they're actually like having a really cool discussion and people are like having good debate and you can just feel like the energy is just electric. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like the same team, two different situations, really good energy, really bad energy. You can just feel it. Right. Um, and you can, you can control that so much more than you think. Yeah, that's almost a different podcast entirely. But the, the quick point there is that you can control your energy towards what you want. And it's, it's important not to let other people influence that, especially if, if you think about who is in your circle. And we're not saying to eliminate people from your circle. You know, again, this might be an entirely different subject. But just kind of evaluate and be aware of who is in your circle. And are they giving you any... Uh, feedback that is not what you want in terms of uh, energy feedback. So uh, just be aware of it. Don't necessarily change anything, but, but be aware of what that energy is shifting. Yeah, and even even just with that, we I'd, I had written something down here. I'd, I had no idea where it should go in the podcast, but I think um, this is a good place to bring it up, which is um, a quote from an article that I had found, which was, think of it this way. If someone else can make you feel bad about yourself, then you are dependent upon them changing for you to feel good right so if someone else can control the way you feel then you're just always going to be dependent on that person's ability to it might might be that i need this person's approval to feel good at work or i need my whatever my spouse's approval on something or this person's mad at me so now i'm going to you know be upset until they feel better towards Mm -hmm. me Right. If, if you're relying on other people to control your energy, they will. So last one, and a really good way to change your own energy is through affirmations. 
these are super easy. I actually have some right here in front of me, ironically. Right we here. love adversity. Paper. Yeah, there you go. So like if, if you're feeling your energy being changed, you can just tell yourself that it's something different. You know, uh, I am going to achieve X. I am talented enough to do Y. You know, you can tell yourself whatever it is and your mind will believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, you s affirmations are great. Do you do like an affirmation mantras in the morning? Do you, do you like wake up and say like, Frank, you just talk to yourself like Frank, like I just... I'm going to win today. Uh, I've done it today. I've done it. It's usually like more would. along the lines of like, I'm going to beat Roger Perrin at podcasting today. He <laughs> thinks he's so sick. I'm taking him out today. You know, <laughs> you're, you're a heavy affirmations guy. I could just, I could feel it. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. I think it's going to be our next episode. It's called the bear method. B E A R. Your beliefs lead to your emotions. Your emotions lead to your actions. Your actions lead to your results. And the core of that principle is affirmations of your beliefs. And if you change the underlying belief, you can change everything that follows it all the way through to your actions. So I don't want to spoil it for the next episode, but uh, I would love well, to talk just about did. that. <laughs> That's a teaser. <laughs> That's called a teaser in the business, all right? Try to keep yeah. up. So af affirmations go hand in hand with reframing, which was our very first episode of Net Gains of like reframing the negative, the negative and being... You're really just accepting that the things that happen that are um, in contrast to your your um, your manifestation or your goals um, are just part of the journey, part of the process. That's why I just love that quote. We love adversity. I think it was like one of the most valuable things that you taught me was that mindset around that. And it's just I, I literally think every point I freaking lose now. I just, that quote just plays in my mind like a recording. Mm -hmm. Just your cheesy face saying, we love adversity. We love adversity, baby. <laughs> we love it. Yep. All right, yeah, so it just gets me. Let's give some examples here. So we just gave a bunch of tips on how to manifest something. Let's take, to, take you through some real life examples and then show how we'd use that. So um, easy one here. I want to be a pro athlete. First of all, that's your decision. You've decided that's what you want to manifest. I want to be a pro athlete. Next, you need to spot the signs that it's possible. Do you have physical skills that'll lead you there? You know, are you are you athletic? Um, are you are you working hard? Every every step and action, or sorry, every every step and sign that you see in life leading you towards this end result should reaffirm that narrative that you are going to be a pro athlete. Yeah, and all the little wins along the way, right? Like I think I mentioned earlier about, like I just won a point against a mm -hmm. team that is rated higher than me. Mm -hmm. Right, like that shows that you are able to compete at that level. You had a good workout. That workout was mm -hmm. great. I'm now one step closer. You know, you're just reaffirming yep. this narrative over and over again. Yep. Affirmations. Be, great one too. Yep. Go ahead. Focusing on your energy, which yep. is that sort of, and, and maybe you can take this one. But I sort of look at it as like confidence, right? Like that by spotting the signs that it's possible and looking for the blue car, you're building your confidence and your energy that you can do this and you can make it through the adversity that you're going to see. But um, an acceptance that you can control that energy, that you can control the journey toward becoming a pro athlete. And another way of looking at it, at it too is if, if this was true, this end, this end result, this manifestation that you're a pro athlete was true, what type of energy would you give off if that was true? Obviously, you'd be mm -hmm. super confident. You'd be you know, straight back, shoulders back, walking with purpose, poised. So if these are the, the um, energy, you know, whatever, emotions that you would feel if this was true, start doing them right now. And, and within athletics too, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you've heard this a lot, but tell me if you haven't, which is, I've always felt that it's like, even though I have that like dark side energy to like motivate me on like, I'm going to, this person, I'm going to work harder than this person and all that stuff. Like this person, I'm going to prove these people wrong. It's still me versus me, no matter what I'm competing. Like, because I'm looking at my journey as like my journey to becoming a pro athlete as my journey, you know? And it's still like, even when I'm winning or losing or whatever's happening on the court, I'm still like, 
it's a can Roger today be better than Roger yesterday? One mm-hmm. percent right? better. That, yeah, one percent better every day. Um, and I think that if you have that focus, like that true acceptance that it's like you versus you, then it's easier to control your energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally agree. So, how about another example? Let's go. Uh, let's go through the business side and talk us through uh, a manifestation on that one. Yeah, let's just say you're you're working for someone else and you want a promotion to become a manager. Like, I want to become a manager at the company, right? Um, so that's deciding what you're trying to manifest. Spotting the signs that it's possible might be like, wow, I just mentored a new intern that came in and they they gave me good feedback, right? Um, and, you know, so I was, I was able to work with, I, I've been working well with other teammates um, and I have really good relationships inside the company. Um, or I trained this person when they came in on this thing and they are now becoming successful at that thing, right? So management requires leadership. So um, you're spotting those signs within the company that you are good at it. Or even it could just be that you're really good at your job and, and you had like, I grew this account or this part of the business and it was, it's been going really well. We're growing 50% year over year, you know, and that may be like spotting signs that you, um, like can drive a lot of value to the company and thus, uh, should be on track for a promotion or management. And, and let's say that you're in a little, maybe a funk for lack of a better word, where you're maybe not spotting these blue car signs. You can create affirmations that will reinforce those signs for you. Just, just do it, right? So uh, let's say that you're maybe, you struggled with a, an interpersonal relationship, like maybe managing two employees, right? You can just tell yourself affirmations. I am great at handling interpersonal conflicts. And if you tell yourself this over and over again, you'll eventually trick your subconscious into thinking it's real. And then all of a sudden you'll be better at it. And that drives more signs towards your end result. Yeah. And you see the exact opposite with people who are going through like depression or other things like mental, actual mental illness issues where they are, um, you're talking to them about like anything and it's like they, they are continuously affirming the negative. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do this, but it's not that it's too hard. It's, and it's not that it's, it's not that they're wrong, like that there's not chemical issues there that are well beyond my comprehension. Right. Um, but it's like a self-fulfilling, uh, cycle, like a vicious cycle where it's like, even when they're getting out of it or feeling better, they can affirm themselves back into it and they just get stuck in that cycle. Like, so you can see the same happens on the negative side. Yeah. I think that that's such a good example. Let's go through a quick example on the negative side too. So let's just talk about financial Mm -hmm. freedom. If you want to have X dollars in your bank account to be able to, I don't know, have financial freedom to take a vacation or buy a new car, uh, in the negative way, the same way you can do it in the positive way, you can spot the negative signs. Let's say you got a parking ticket, right? There's another $50 out of your bank account. Oh, I'll never have financial freedom to go on this vacation. Or uh, let's say groceries got more expensive. You know, we had, we had the, um, the, egg, the egg crisis last year where uh, eggs like tripled in price. Oh, I'll never have financial freedom. And so your mind is telling you all these negative reinforcing narratives instead of you physically reframing them into the positive and trying to spot the positive signs. Exactly. That's a great example. You just riff that one off the top of your head, huh? Right off the top of the head, baby. That's what I do. Top of the dome. (laughs) But you could do the, let's just use the same example. And I know we're not going to go examples all day long, but like (laughs) if it's the same person and let's say you found a coupon where you're going to get 50% off your ground turkey for the week, that's a great (laughs) positive sign that you're finding your way towards financial freedom or you know, you did something at work that might lead to a pay raise or uh, you found a side hustle, babysitting, whatever, you know, there's like unlimited positive signs that you can find if mm-hmm. you're looking for them. But you have to un- identify your end goal, the end result, the manifestation you want to be real, and then identify the signs that will lead you towards it and then create affirmations that will lead you towards it and focus your energy towards it. Yep, and, and everything we're talking about here is training your mind, literally training your mind. Mm-hmm to think the right way to set your manifestation up for success. 
Beautiful. Cool. Uh, what's you our got a uh, quote? motivational quote? You, you got it. You sourced it, so you can, you can <clears throat> drop us for it. All right, ready? Your imagination is your preview of life's coming attractions. Albert Einstein. Woo! The goat. Love that. I think we've used like three or four Albert Einstein quotes. Have we really? We've only had 10 episodes, so I don't think yeah. 40% of them have been Albert Einstein quotes. I don't know. If they, if they haven't been, they should be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, you missed it, but on, on my whiteboard last week, I had a, an, uh, an Arnold Schwarzenegger quote. I was surprised you didn't call that one out. No, I didn't see it. What does it say this week? Uh, oh, there you go. It, o- it always seems impossible until it's done. Hmm. Hmm. Bingo. Kind of weird. You think I, so? My, like, getting the groceries doesn't feel impossible, and then it's done. Uh, well, I mean, that's because your, your mindset is so strong. You have no doubt that you can get those groceries. <laughs> and, I, just, and I feel like I just destroyed your quote there. You're also a millionaire, too, so I don't think groceries <laughs> is, is exactly the best example for an impossible task. Uh, yeah. But, like, yeah. you know, beating me in a volleyball tournament, that's a pretty impossible task for you. So That's a pretty easy task. That's easier than the groceries. I don't think you've done it in six years. What? I mean, I, I don't even play. Ooh, pretty impossible task. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get out of here. All right, play us out, okay. friend. We're done. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching or listening. Hope you learned something in this episode. Uh, your homework for today is find some positive signs towards something you want to manifest. And if you don't have a manifestation laid out, then go f***ing lay it out today. All right? <laughs> Garrett, bleep that. Uh, but yeah, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for supporting. Uh, feel free to shoot us an email, netgainspodcast at gmail.com. Reach out to us on Instagram, TikTok. We're happy to help everybody who's, who's listening. And we will see you on the next episode. Yoo!